Channel 3 is your back to school authority and we're talking with superintendents all around our state to get the pulse of what's new for this school year. Today I am joined by Dr. Marianne Butler. She is the superintendent of Stonington Schools. Uh, welcome Marianne. Thank you, Kara. Very happy to be here. We're excited to talk to you about, and I know you have some exciting news. You're going to be the first high school in Connecticut to try out this new program that's really exciting for students who perhaps want to go into the building field. Tell us about that. We are. We're very fortunate, Kara, to have um, landed a grant through the Home Builders uh, Institute, which is allowing our students an opportunity to uh, earn pre-apprenticeship credentialing hours, uh, up to 150 hours, uh, should they want to pursue a, a career in the trades. Uh, so it's it's very exciting. There's four modules that the children will be taking over the course of a year um, in construction math, tool and construction materials, safety in the workplace, and then employability. Um, it's great. We have 15 students signed up, and we're very proud to be leaders in Connecticut for um, addressing what we know is a workplace workforce uh, crisis that's happening in our in our state and across the country. Yeah, and, and it seems that high schools are, uh, is that, do you think it's a focus of education where schools are really trying to give kids some more practical tools? I know when we grew up, sometimes we complain, like, well, how come we didn't learn how to balance our checkbooks mm -hmm. in school? Like, you know, but it seems like there's a, there's a focus on teaching kids um, stuff that will really help them in that next phase of their life in the real world. Absolutely, absolutely. And it starts at the elementary level. We actually are working with Electric Boat, who um, they're actually at our, our K and five schools. They'll be out here teaching the kids through our STEM course a little bit about what those careers in manufacturing are all about. So the idea to open up options for students, whether they want to be enrolled in college or they want to be employed upon graduation or they want to enlist in our services, that it's not a one size fits all college prep uh, world anymore and we want to make sure that we're we're doing right by our students all of our students that makes sense a lot of sense so talk about um, I know we've had a big gap and people talk about the gap in learning a little bit with what we went through with the pand pandemic but your district improvement plan talks about focusing on student engagement especially in math and there's a plan to really help uh, do that can you talk about that Absolutely. Um, we've been doing a lot of work uh, probably the last three to four years on student engagement and working around the implementation of what, what are called trauma sensitive practices. But really what, the, what that translates into in plain languages is making sure our children have opportunities to respond um, in class, a lot of different opportunities to respond, whether it's in a small group setting and writing orally, and also that we, we make sure that the, the positive statements students are receiving from their educators have a five to one ratio to the corrective uh, statements that the students are hearing so that there's money in the bank when we give students feedback about their behavior. And, uh, and what, what that means is engaged students are, are not discipline issues and they're actually uh, engaged in the content. So we're gonna continue that um, and we monitor that in the classroom with uh, teams of administrators that go out and uh, not in a value way, but actually take a look using an instrument that has been developed by some of our consultants that's research-based to see whether or not the level of engagement is where we want it to be. And we know that if that's happening in the mathematics classes, um, that's an indicator that our, our curriculum is actually being implemented the way it's intended. So uh, it's really a, a two-fold uh, instrument and exercise in that respect. Yeah, you know, the world has changed. Um, we're getting the guidance that you don't need social distancing anymore. You don't need to wear masks. I know a lot of people are wondering, like, what's is school just going to be like it was before the pandemic when we go back or have things changed? Uh, what can people expect? Well, I, I hate the, set, the fact that we use the term of going back to normal because I think the whole point is to, to learn from the pandemic and yeah. to actually be better than the, the, the before normal uh, situation. So I do think that, you know, when we look at the safety and mitigation factors, we're still looking at suggesting that, you know, vaccines are, first, are our first line of defense and keeping kids in an in, in-person learning setting uh, in the most successful way we possibly can. And that those mitigation strategies are going to be very much like they were at the end of the last year that 
folks and students and staff will have the option to wear masks if they want to, but um, our, our nurse uh, supervisor in, in collaboration with our, our medical advisor have put together a one page document to guide families, you know, throughout the year as to, to what the steps are going to be should they have somebody in their household that's a positive case for uh, COVID uh, and, and actually provide them with a calculator that's going to make it really easy for them to at home figure out should their student or child be positive, what that uh, quarantine time will be based on the, the specific facts. So I, I don't want to say the word relaxed, but it is, you know, we've learned to live with this, this virus. And I think uh, things won't be normal. Uh, hopefully they'll be better than normal. And we, we're in very good shape with filling our employment um, vacancies uh, and uh, we're, we're, ready, we're ready to open the doors uh, right after Labor Day. Okay. Well, I know folks are going to be excited to go back and uh, it feels like a fresh start for so many. So we really appreciate you, uh, Marianne, taking the time uh, to talk about what's exciting and new in, Sto in Stonington. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, doctor.